Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to talk about functions. And a function is a type of a relationship. You know what a relationship is. If two things are related, they, they tend to vary in a predictable fashion. As one changes, the other will change. Here's an example of a relationship. There's a relationship between height and age. Younger kids are usually shorter than taller kids. But it's not a precise relationship. It's not like you could say that everybody that's 5 feet 1 inches tall is 12 years old. And if you were to graph the age of kids against their heights, you'd see a relationship. As the age increased, the height increased. But it's not a precise relationship. And for any one age, you might have two separate heights. So there's a tendency for them to, re to relate to each other, for them to increase or decrease in a predictable fashion, but it's not a precise relationship. A function, however, is a precise relationship. As one value increases or decreases, the other one changes in a totally predictable fashion. For instance, let's say you had a lawn mowing business and you earned $5 an hour for mowing lawns. You'd know that if you worked three hours mowing lawns, you'd earn $15. If you worked four hours, you'd earn $20. And if you were to graph the number of hours that you worked against your earnings, it'd be a completely predictable straight line. And there'd be only be one value of y for every value of x. So a function is a kind of relationship where there's a totally predictable and precise relationship between the two things that you're comparing. Let's put this in the mathematical terms. If we had a function y equals 5x, and that's really the function we were talking about in the lawn mowing business. The amount of money you make is equal to five dollars times the number of hours you work. We call this the function y equals 5x. And we call x the input value. We call x the input value because we input the value of x into the function. And what comes out the other end? the output value. We call x the independent variable because you could pick any number of hours in, 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 that you mowed lawns. You could pick three hours, you could pick five hours. It's, it's independent. You can pick what you want. But the y value is not independent. It's dependent. It depends on what value you put into x. If you put 2 in as x, y is going to be 10. A function's a little bit like a meat grinder. It's a meat grinder because the function's going to change what you put into it, and what comes out will be different. For instance, I input my x value into this function, and out comes a y value. So we know we earn $5 an hour for mowing lawns. And we've created a function or an equation that will help us figure out how much we'd make for any different numbers of hours worked. That function is y equals 5x. The amount we earn is equal to 5 times the number of hours we work. If we input 3 as the number of hours we work, into the function y equals 5x, our output value will be 15. It's just like that meat grinder. 
the meat grinder is y equals 5x if I input three hours the meat grinder is gonna spill out fifteen dollars now what we just did was evaluate the function y equals 5x for three hours what value of y do we get if we put three in as the number of hours worked that's called evaluating the function for three we substitute three for x and then solve the equation when we substitute three for x the equation reads y equals five times three five times three equals fifteen so y equals fifteen when we evaluate the function for three now you notice we've got an x value and a y value and that's a solution to the function y equals 5x the function works with x values of 3 and a y value of 15 but there are other solutions 4 and 20 works 5 and 25 works all those are solutions to the function y equals 5x 3 and 10 wouldn't work though because that would not be a solution because if we substituted 3 for x in the equation y equals 5x we don't get 10 your world's just filled with functional relationships and if you think for a minute you'll come up with some examples but the problem is you're probably going to come up with an example that's in English because you tend to think in English in order to manipulate and solve that functional relationship though you're going to have to convert it or translate it into math and that can be a little bit hard let's look at an example you and your family take a trip to the zoo in Zabuda you're looking forward to seeing their new zebra exhibit it's 162 miles from your house to the zoo and your dad says you'll drive at an average speed of 36 miles per hour how long will it take you to get to the zoo well I, that looks really confusing to me I don't know there's there's a lot of interesting stuff in there I think it's interesting that you're gonna go to the zoo in Zabuda to see zebras but that's probably not gonna help me solve this problem I want to tackle this I think by CUC seeing it I'm gonna circle the numbers and underline the question and then I'm gonna give the question a variable name and I think that'll help me put this together I'm gonna circle 162 I'm gonna circle 36 and I'm gonna circle the question or underline the question how long will it take you to get to the zoo and I'm gonna call that Y now I've really only got three things to look at I've got a 162, I've got a 36, and I've got a Y. I just have to find a way to combine those in order to create an equation or a function. Well, I'll need an equal sign because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to solve this. And I'm trying to solve for Y, so I'm going to say Y equals something. Now I've only got 162 and 36 and I've got to find some way to combine the 162 and the 36 that duplicates what the problem says the problem says I have to go 162 miles and I'm dri driving an average speed of 36 miles per hour now I guess I could add them I could subtract them I could multiply those two numbers or I could divide them but if you think about it you know that if you're going 36 miles per hour and you've got to go 162 miles in one hour you would have dri driven at 36 miles in two hours you would have driven twice 36 miles so you're gonna to have to divide the 162 by 36 to find out how many hours it is that you you need to travel to get 162 miles I need to divide the 162 by 36 and then my equation or my function reads y equals 162 divided by 36 now there's not an x in there does that mean it's not a function well not really it's a function because 
Actually, either the 162 or the 36 could be an x, and I could make this a much more generic equation. For instance, if I knew I had to go 162 miles, but I didn't know what my average speed would be, I could change that 36 into an x, and I'd say that y equals 162 divided by x. Or, if I knew that my average speed was going to be 36, but I didn't know how far I was going, I could call the 162 an x. And then I'd have y equals x divided by 36. You discover that the more you practice on the piano, the better you become. Is this a relationship? Yes, it is. There's a pattern, a predictable relationship between the amount of practice and the amount of improvement. So, it is a relationship. Is it a function? Well, no, because there's not a precise relationship between the amount of practice and the amount of improvement. You can't say that X hours of practice will result in exactly Y improvement in your piano playing. So this is not a function. It costs $1.99 each to buy download songs at Download World. Can you create a function to determine how much you would pay for any number of downloads? Well, let's see you see this. I'm going to circle $1.99 and I'm going to underline how much would you pay for any number of downloads. And that's the question. That's what we're trying to solve for. So I need to give it a variable name. Why? But wait, I've only got two elements here. I've only got two things to put together. I've got a dollar ninety-nine and I've got y. And I know I need an x because I'm trying to create a function. What is x? Well, x is our independent variable. It's the number that we can independently substitute into the function to find out what y would be. And in this case, the thing that's going to vary independently is the number of downloads. You could have any number of downloads, and each would result in a different value for y. So that's my x variable. Now, I've got only three elements, $1.99, x, and y. Now, I'll probably need an equal sign because I'm going to try to create an equation. And then I'm probably going to need some kind of an operand. I'm going to need to either add or subtract or multiply or divide my $1.99 and my x and do that in a fashion that duplicates what the question says. Well, how am I going to put this together? I'm going to start by saying y equals. Now, I know my x has got to be on the other side of the equation and I know my $1.99 has got to be on the other side of the equation. And all I got to do is figure out do I add those two, do I subtract them, do I multiply them, or do I divide them? How am I going to figure that out? Well, I got to go back and read the problem and think about it. It says I'm going to spend a dollar ninety nine each. Each what? Each download. So I'm going to spend a dollar ninety nine for each download I get. If I get one download, it's going to be one times a dollar ninety nine. If I get two downloads, it's going to be two times a dollar ninety-nine. If I get three downloads, it's going to be three times a dollar ninety-nine. I need to multiply my x and my one ninety-nine, and now my function reads y equals one ninety-nine times x. Our lesson on functions. Now it's time to test your skill. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on functions. After you've mastered the worksheet on functions, go back to Master Math 
and try the quiz on functions. And no matter what you do, be sure you come back to Master Math again real soon.